What's up guys, this is Nick from stridewise.com and today I am reviewing the very waxy, very ethically made, like surprisingly, legitimately ethically made Andres All Weather Boot from Nisolo, a company that makes a boot that has a secret in its soul. So Nisolo, the brand, is a little bit better known for their women's boots than their men's boots. Like, I think the men's line launched a bit later, like their men's account has way fewer followers than the women's account. But although with the Andres boot, there is one curious review on their website from a woman who bought them and apparently really likes them. Uh, all the other reviews are from men. These are definitely men's boots, don't make any mistake about it. They have a menswear line, it's a masculine pair of boots. And the way that they elevate themselves above the fray of competing boot brands is the fact that Nasola has a really big emphasis on like ethics and sustainability. They actually sent me their 63 page impact report that I went through that has all this information about how they do everything from managing the hazardous material in an ethical way, to define gender norms. The one thing I did want to focus on, and I'm sorry to kind of go on about it a little bit, but one thing that really did leap out at me, and this is because my dad used to work at one, is the fact that uh, they are a B Corp, which means they really dedicate a very significant amount of profit and manpower toward ensuring that they have like a lot of environmental stewardship, that all their workers get paid fair wages, all that sort of stuff. They're not paying me to say this, like I swear to God, this is not a commercial or anything like that, just like from my own experience with B Corps, I know it is a tremendously difficult certification to get, and it's one you can really trust with a company. So like they have multiple organizations to verify they treat employees ethically, they get healthcare and time off, they make at least 27% more than fair trade wage requirements, often twice that. Uh, I don't know, man, it's cool. Again, it's a really hard certification to get. Uh, I think uh, B Corp, it is something you can trust uh, if ethical manufacturing is something that's really, really important to you. Anyway, they also make boots. So let's talk about the aesthetics of this boot before getting into the leather and the sole. So the Andres boot, or like Andres boot, or Andres, Andres boot, I don't know how to pronounce that, I never asked them, but uh, the Solo says it's their most anticipated boot of all time. It's like their effort at the really like standard service boot, the kind of masculine footwear that's like, you know, not very uh, outrageous looking, the kind of like easy masculine sort of boot that every guy kind of wants in his closet. So this is their attempt at making that boot. They're very excited about it. Everything is largely handmade. Like the last thing is done by hand, but with a machine for assistance uh, to maintain the consistency and the pressure, that sort of thing. The stitching is like largely done by hand on the insole and everything. They use some machines here and there, but uh, it's largely handmade and it's all done in Leon, which is a town in Mexico that's really well known as like the leather and footwear capital of Mexico is where everyone gets their boots made if they get their boots made in Mexico. It's known for this really, really high quality stuff down there. The leather is available in five different leathers. The boot is available in five different leathers. Most of them are smooth leathers. But this one here, the waxed suede, that's the most popular one. So that's the one that I am reviewing. As I mentioned, it's a pretty basic service boot type aesthetic. It's double stitched uh, along the side of the vamp and the counter and it's like single stitched up along by the laces. So it doesn't have that whole triple stitch thing that say a red wing has or quadruple stitching that really durable boots have uh, like white boots for instance. Uh, but nonetheless, that sort of more subtle approach to stitching does make it just a little bit more versatile and a little bit easier to dress up. But there are a couple things I wanted to point out that emphasize the boots uh, sort of all weather nature. Number one is the fact that the suede is wax, which really helps improve its water and weather resistance. It's also got a gusseted tongue and it's also got a storm well. All three of these together mean that it's going to be able to survive rough weather and survive rain a lot more easily. But I do want to mention the storm welt is not technically a storm welt. They call it a storm welt, but it's not what you might think of when you think of a storm welt. But I'm going to get into that a little bit later on in the sole section. For now, let's quickly talk about this leather. So as the materials here, the suede is from Leon again. Now the suede, uh, the tannery is called Alpha Mix, which specializes in this particular kind of suede. It is 1.6 to 1.8 millimeters thick and it's waxed. So suede has a reputation for being terrible in wet weather, right? But this is waxed suede and the waxing is actually done in the tanning process. It's not applied post production like it often is. So it's a natural component of the leather and it should last in the leather for years and years and years. Really deep scratches might remove the wax, um, just like it would from the finish of any type of leather, but by and large, wax suede, it's pretty hardy. It's not as fluffy as some kind of suede shoes, um, but it is a lot hardier. Nisolo swears to me, these can be worn in the rain and the snow. I've worn them in the rain myself, haven't tried it in the snow yet, but they have held up. They will get little marks in them uh, like this along the vamp there, but uh, you take, to get rid of them, you just need to wipe them down with a damp cloth. Uh, that works pretty well. All right, so the sole, 
This here is a Vibram Mini Lug Sole. I know I'm supposed to say Vibram. Uh, that's technically the correct pronunciation. I don't care, everyone says Vibram. Vibram is very famous. It's not as chunky as Vibram's famous Commando Sole, uh, but I like this Mini Lug stuff here because it has a nice grip while still remaining flat from the side. A couple other things worth noting here are the fact that it has nice thick padding under the heel here, which you can really feel when you're walking around. It's totally leather lined as well, so it feels very nice and soft when you're wearing it. And uh, it has no shank in there. So a shank is a piece of hard material, usually steel, that is inserted in or on the midsole in many boots to provide some arch support and stability to the shoe, helps it maintain its shape over time. They don't have a shank here. Uh, they told me because the heel height and construction doesn't demand it, and it allows us to keep the weight down and the comfort up. That's a direct quote from their emails. A shank is a controversial thing because many say a boot is useless without it. Others, including well-liked boot manufacturers like Rider Boot, they say you just don't really need one and it's overhyped. I will say on average people prefer shanks, but Nasola is right about one thing. The lack of a steel rod in here means that it is indeed a very lightweight shoe, which is rare for something with a storm welt. But it's not really a storm world. I mentioned earlier that this sole has a secret and the secret is that they say it's a storm world, but it is not. Actually, you know what, Let, let's zoom out for this one. So very few people will care about this, but because I consider myself something of a boot journalist, I did have to make something I found out about kind of clear here. So for background, the Goodyear welt is largely considered as the gold standard in like nice durable footwear. The Goodyear welt, that means that a boot is uh, much more water resistant and easy to resole than a regular pair of shoes that have like the upper and the sole like kind of glued together or a Blake stitch, which is like something a little bit different. But anyway, a Goodyear welt, a welt is a piece of like a material, usually leather that runs around the perimeter of the shoe. And uh, a storm welt is when the welt is a little bit longer, as you can see in this pair of Allen Edmonds boots. And it's a little bit longer so you can see that the welt like curves up over the upper of the boot. What that means is that a storm welt relative to a Goodyear welt is a little bit more water resistant and is better at keeping out like muck and grime from the stitching. But it is still considered a Goodyear welt. Now this boot here, the Andres boot, is advertised as having a storm welt. But in my correspondence with Nisolo, they asked, uh, I asked them about the Goodyear welt and everything. They told me it's not a Goodyear welt which doesn't make much sense to me because all storm welts are Goodyear welts. So this is what they told me when I pressed them on this. Our sole and welts on the Andres are constructed with a strong adhesive and not the stitching construction required to consider this boot Goodyear welted. So in other words, while this is a very water resistant shoe, it is not a Goodyear welt, which means it cannot be resold if that's important to you. Maybe it isn't. It's still definitely going to be like weather resistant. Long story short, while it is like a relatively solid construction, it's got a really good quality outsole. You probably won't need to resold for a very, very long time. Nonetheless, uh, probably can't be resold. All right, so as for fit and sizing, thankfully, Nasolo bucks the trend. There are a lot of uh, boot companies out there that just don't do half sizes anymore. I keep on reviewing them lately. Uh, the Taft and YRX and a bunch of other ones. They do do half sizes, which is great because I am a half size myself, I am 11.5, that is my true size, and these shoes run true to size. They run from sizes eight to 13, and the fit is nice. They don't do any wide widths, unfortunately, that's gonna bum out a lot of people out there. I have a regular width, so it's not a big deal. Uh, and there was no break-in, which is one big upside. Another upside is that this big padded area under the heel really is very, very comfortable. Another upside is that the leather, the boot is fully leather lined, which is really cool and kind of rare, and it always makes like a more, plush feeling when you're wearing them, like especially that combined with a padded area under the heel. All that is pretty nice. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, because there's no shank in this, it's a very lightweight boot. And I imagine the um, the lack of like a real Goodyear welt probably has something to do with that as well. Um, you can, you might have your own thoughts about all that, but I can definitely attest that this is a boot that feels a little bit more like a sneaker than a pair of boots. Now for some people, uh, they don't like that, for other people they love that, so it's a very individual thing. But all I'm gonna say here is that it's much more lightweight than you might imagine it being. And it's got really, really good shock absorption from the padded area under the heel. And it's got the leather lining. So comfort wise, it wasn't the best arch support in the entire world, again, because there's no shank, but it was fine. Like the padded area under the heel uh, sort of gave that uh, illusion anyway of like some okay arch support. Uh, long story short, uh, good shock absorption, nice and comfortable, very, very lightweight. All right, now as for the price, uh, it totally depends on when you're watching this review. If you manage to watch this in that late December, early January window, uh, they're having a sale that a discount code still works on, by the way, makes them even cheaper. If you are not watching it in the holiday season, uh, the boots, they are 288 
dollars ish can always change that's like the normal price for these boots so that price is okay i'm not absolutely blown away by it i'll tell you what there are some things that are, are things that would make these boots more expensive. So those would be stuff like uh, the fact that it's like pretty nice suede, the fact that it's very uh, water resistant, the fact that it's handmade, the fact that it has this uh, nice uh, Vibram brand outsole, and the fact that it is a part of a B Corp and that kind of stuff, the whole ethical, sustainable kind of stuff. That means they're paying their workers more. That means there's a lot more oversight in their factories and so on that does lead to a more expensive shoot. The things that would make these boots less expensive are the fact that they are made in Mexico, the fact that they do not have a shank, the fact that they do not have a Goodyear welt. Goodyear welts in particular, they really do add, uh, they, they always add a pretty big amount to the price of a shoe. It's much more like labor intensive. These shoes don't have it. So when I thought this had a Goodyear welt and I thought this was a real storm welt, I thought 288 bucks was a really, really impressive price given all the other upsides of this boot that I just mentioned. When I found out that it does not have a real, real storm welt that it's actually more like attached with adhesive, I thought, okay, the price is fine. Like I'm not blown away by it, but I don't have any issues with it. It's fair um, and really that whole ethical sustainability thing, um, it really does make me pretty comfortable buying these shoes. Okay, so why should you consider uh, getting a pair of the Andres all weather boots? So I promise this is the last time I'm going to say this, but it really is very cool that they have a B Corp certification. I'm sorry to keep going on about it. But again, I have personal experience with B Corps and it is, it's a really, really hard certification to get. Um, a lot of people, when they hear that a boot is made in Mexico or I don't know, made in China or whatever, a lot of the times, the, if you ask them why that's an issue for them, a lot of the times what their mind is going to go to is like uh, sweatshops and like, you know, bad workers, rights, uh, unfair wages, that sort of thing. Uh, a B Corp, they, you really can trust that certification. Uh, it means that the, the workers are they're paid far above the uh, fair labor wage. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That's a cool thing about these boots. Another thing, um, they are nice and versatile. Like they're a plain toe boot. There's nothing like especially uh, outrageous about them. There's nothing especially, I guess, memorable about the way they look. But what I'm trying to say is that I think most guys out there, they want like just like a plain toe. Uh, this is what a service boot is. Just like a pretty low profile toe, just like a plain sort of boot. It's versatile, it's gonna go with everything. It's masculine, you don't have to think about it too much. That's this boot is like, you know, there's no one who would hate to wear this boot is what I'm trying to say here. So it's kind of going to fit into a wide variety of different wardrobes and different men's styles and different men. Uh, also, I'm a big fan of the like big padded soft area underneath the heel uh, and the fact that it is fully leather lined uh, and the fact that it is uh, very lightweight as well. All this stuff comes together to make it a bit more like a sneaker than a pair of boots. Now that's gonna depend on you as to whether or not that's like a good thing or a bad thing. These do not feel like a pair of Red Wings, which are very stumpy, very heavy, very shanky, uh, very without soft padded foam anywhere like that. Um, what I'm trying to say here though, is that there's definitely a big contingent of people out there who like the look of boots. Uh, they would prefer to be wearing something that feels a bit more like a sneaker anyway. That's what these boots are. Despite their very normal plain service boot like appearance, uh, they are lighter, they have better shock absorption, they feel nicer on the foot, and they're just more airy than a normal uh, pair of boots normally is, which is pretty impressive, especially given the fact that it's also very, very water resistant with the wax suede and this sort of storm well. It's not quite a storm well, but nonetheless, it does do the job of keeping the water out, keeping your feet nice and dry while being very lightweight. So all that is a pretty rare combination for a pair of boots. All right, so there are a couple things you might not like quite so much about these boots. I'll start very small. There are no speed hooks. Some people just do not buy boots without speed hooks uh, because it takes a few extra seconds to lace the boots up. Uh, it takes longer to put on. I mean, whatever, but a lot of people like that's like a, a deal breaker for them. So fair enough if that's you. But there are, there are really like two main things I think that might turn people off of these boots. Number one is the fact that it does not have a shank. Uh, and again, as I mentioned earlier, it's very controversial as to whether or not that even matters at all. But uh, I cannot deny the fact that there is a pretty broad contingent of people in the boot community and the shoe community who say that a shank is the most important part of a pair of footwear. It helps to confer durability, helps to maintain the shape of the shoe over time, gives you a bit more arch support and so on. There's no shank here. That's the one thing that you might not like so much. And the other thing is the fact that it is not resolvable. It is uh, good to uh, keep water out. You know, it is a sort of like a storm well in that regard, like in that the little lip here that's running around the perimeter of the shoe. That will do a decent job and has done for me at keeping out water and everything. But it's not a real good year welt and you won't be able to resole the shoes. And given the price of the boots, um, you know, a lot of people, if they're spending almost 300 bucks on a pair of boots, they're gonna be annoyed that it doesn't have a real good year welt that's not gonna be resolable. I think it's fine. I think the pros outweigh the cons with this boot. I think uh, the B Corp thing is definitely worth it. I just want to emphasize that's kind of the main thing that you're paying for here. Uh, if they didn't have the B Corp, these shoes would probably be worth uh, under 250 bucks. That would be a normal price. The price you're paying here, 
That's because it is, uh, the company does have a real genuine commitment to ethical, uh, sustainable manufacturing of their booze. So if that's the thing that you like, if that rings true to you, I think they're a pretty good buy. Just, you know, don't expect them to last more than like, you know, five, 10 years, however long it takes you to wear down the sole. All right, those are my thoughts on the Andres All Weather Boot. Andres and and Andres All Weather Boot. Uh, it's available in five other leathers, no, four other leathers, five leathers in total, by the way. So you can check that out at the link in the description below if you are interested in purchasing these shoes. If not, that's totally fine, but make sure you subscribe because I have a whole lot more boot reviews and uh, denim reviews and uh, like jacket reviews and all this other kind of stuff coming up.